Hello, 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 and welcome to the Rag Company Podcast. We're at Main Show 48. It's pretty and good. Hey. To my right, I've got Levi. Hey, guys, what's going on? Gates. And to my left, I've got <laughs> Anthony. What's up? <laughs> Please don't do that. You threw off my. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I, had I, did. A, I had a cadence. Not, I had a fun thing. The cadence is off. Man, let's the, let's just move gotta, on. We, we got a vibe uh, here. So, at any rate, good that's stuff. Fun. Good stuff. I try and have fun. Something next. Uh, well, something different's going to happen next time. So, whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we got stuff to talk about. So, let's get to it. What happened this weekend, guys? A lot of good stuff. It was a beautiful weekend. It was nice. Yeah, it was. It was. Weather was perfect. It was well, crazy. It was a good toasty. weekend to go out and do things. Yeah. You know, get outside. We did. I did a lot. I did a lot what of stuff. What did you do? Well, uh, some of you may have, may or may not have seen, uh, if you follow my Instagram, the Rag Company Levi. You should. Uh, Nate and I, Nate's our uh, web guy here and uh, e-commerce. Um, me and him went out to Nampa to pick up. Nampon. Yep. The city of Nampon. The city of Nampon. <laughs> we went out to went out to Nampa to pick up uh, my uh, little 2000 GMC Sonoma. Oh, yes. That I bought yep, for eight hundred dollars. Well, and Nate was there because Nate brought his little yeah. S10. So you yeah, kind of both so, had the same idea. Yeah. So uh, one of the fun things I did though was Nate and I were driving, and his truck's way nicer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> his has like seventy thousand miles on it. He paid like five grand. Uh, it was an old man truck. Like it's well, one a owner kind of deal. Stark contrast to what oh, you got. Oh, mine's uh, mine was uh, eight hundred dollars with two hundred thousand miles. But yours on is it. a twenty footer. From twenty feet away, it looks pretty good. Twenty feet away, it looks all right. You get up close, and it's like, whoa, <laughs> that is a <laughs> that beater. is an eight hundred dollar yeah, truck. That's an eight hundred dollar <laughs> truck. Um, so we uh, we drove out there, and one of the things that he was joking, we were talking about. He's like, oh, this doesn't have a tilt. His truck doesn't have a tilt column, oh. right? And he's like, that's the only thing I wish I had a tilt column. And uh, we get out there. Lo and behold, mine has a tilt column. Oh, that's <laughs> exciting. So I showed that. I was like, look how great this I is. I mean, we are talking about basically low Welcome trim level. To the yeah. year 2000. So, yeah. yeah. You're not. Well, you're his not is like a 99. A so okay. okay. There's not yeah, a lot of creature bad. comforts going on. No, but mine's a GMC, so it's a professional grade vehicle. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's built for you know, tough. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's Ford, not built for tough. Sorry, it's the wrong brand. Uh, it's but the it was, uh, but S10, the GMCs so. are usually always higher level optioned than a Chevrolet. Yeah, it's like comparing a Denali to a Tahoe, right? Yeah. It's like yeah, the, you're the always going to get like, more. Ooh, yeah. yeah, so it had a tilt, had cruise, all that good stuff. So, but anyway, we drove out, picked it up, uh, picked it up from this kid, and uh, drove it back. It's got a hole in the exhaust pipe, which yeah. I knew about. Sounds good. Uh, AC needs recharge, which I knew about. Um, so, uh, but drove back just fine. Needs an alignment, needs a couple tires, just standard stuff. It's an $800 truck. People yeah, are going like, to want to know though, you, what was the condition of the paint? Did you take a paint <laughs> depth measurement on there? Well, let's just say um, it's, uh, most um, of the truck has been spray painted red. <laughs> spray paint. Yeah. So it's like my Miata then. Rattle yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, most of it's been spray painted. There's a ton of clear coat failure. 20 footer. All over it. <laughs> um, it's got a dent in the hood, and there was some Bondo, apparently, mm. covering that dent. Mm. Nice. Okay. And then it needs a new bumper cover. The bumper cover's all cracked. So oh, yeah. the cool thing is these trucks are cheap. Like, yeah. so the parts are cheap. I found a front bumper cover for like $35. Well, my question is, right, so Nate bought his $5,000 S10, yeah. right? Do you think it will take you to get up to $5,000 to get this truck to look as good as what his is? Yeah, it probably <laughs> will. <laughs> I, like, I sincerely yeah. doubt that. Yeah, well, I had well, I'm not. I'm not, for, I'm not going for. I'm not going for that adds level. Up fast. It adds you up. Can, I will. But I look at it and I go, okay, I'm gonna just try and get it mechanically sound. Uh, my goal with it is that it, my wife can hop in it when I'm out of town or something and run an errand, like yeah. go to Home Depot, pick something up, come back, and go. Oh, it's so nice having that little truck. That's. That's like it's, whatever I do is worth it to me. It's a third vehicle. If my wife is happy just hopping in it, driving it for less than an hour, that's all I need her to do. Yeah. yeah. And she'll be good. So I spent Sunday, Saturday afternoon uh, shampooing it because the mm -hmm. kid smokes in it. So I used, oh, went yeah. through a lot of Terminator, uh, shampooed it a lot. I'm going to do an, an odor bomb in it. Um, that was the biggest. That any, needed a any, lot of any it. cigarette burns. A couple. There's some. There's some cigarette burns, but again, it's a two hundred thousand mile truck. I yeah. don't. Yeah. Plus care. side though, because it's 
compact pickup, the cab is relatively small, so there's not yeah. as much surface area to clean as in like a sedan. Yeah, no, it didn't take me long, and yeah. I cleaned everything up, and it's it's good. Everything looks good. Uh, it still just has that twinge of that tinge of smoke. Uh, Here's something to think in it. about. Uh, in the bed, though, you probably have drainage holes in the bed. It has a somewhere. bed liner in it. Okay, so if it gets cleaned, then yeah, just making sure everything's not. Yeah, no, it's just it's got a there. full bed liner, yeah. so okay. um, I'm sure if I could take it out and look and see how long that bed liner's been in the back. Um, now, now, this is, might sound like a stupid question. Uh, is it four wheel drive? No. Oh, I was gonna say, look at the ride now, height on that thing. That's a it's okay. uh, it's got the ZQ8 Sport package on it, so it's got <laughs> it's got sway <laughs> bars, <laughs> dude. It's got Sweet. beefy sway bars front and rear. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It's got a lowering. It's got a factory lowering kit in the front. Okay. Um, and then heavy duty shocks in the rear. I take it. And, yours is the four cylinder though. Yeah. Okay. And two twenty fives. Uh, on all four corners. So are you going to do so. what, some sandbags in the summertime, or what's your plan uh, for that? Well, or, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, wintertime, sandbags in the oh, wintertime. I'm not, I probably won't drive it in the winter. I don't know. The Elantra's a beast in the snow. Oh, that's true. So, I mean, you can't yeah. stop that car in the snow. It's legit yeah. with snow tires. Um, but it has snow tires on it. The truck has mm-hmm. some snow tires on it. Right and, now? Yeah. <laughs> no studs, but they're they're snow tires. So So the compound is all out of whack. Oh, for one's the like one's like gone like it needs replaced. Oh. I'm surprised they made it back from Nampa. It's pretty it. common lug pattern yeah. stuff though. You could replace but those cheap. Beautiful things about Nampon. Got to see uh taco ladder. Mm. Remember the sign I showed you guys, the picture of the tacos mm. on mm-hmm. the ladder like the taco sign, like come yeah. get tacos over here, but Which they used to a ladder. Which to me just seems like Got a, to see that. Seems That's like nice. a so, taco-themed version of like the van that says free candy on the side. Yeah, it's basically. Kind of... <laughs> yeah, it's like tacos over here. Here's some. Here's a ladder we use and then a poster board to hang a sign. I mean, people sign. can't drive a ladder away with so you we got to see that. It, we got to see that. That's when you know that. the tacos are good, though. We got to drive on uh, on the torn-up roads. Yeah. Like when they there. So for those of you that don't understand, Nampa is a little city just 20 miles away from us. Um it's a very odd town. It smells, for one, because there's a sugar beet factory mm-hmm. that processes sugar beets and turns yep. them into sugar, so the whole town just kind of smells. Um, right. To those of you that love Nampa and our locals, at least, I'm sorry, but Good for you, you live in Nampa. Like, yeah. I'm, it's a I'm thing. Just, it's a thing. It's uh, an ongoing battle, 1A versus so one thing so. that Yeah. <laughs> one thing that Nampa does, though, is doing is they are tearing up all their roads. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> literally, they are, like, I thought it was a joke. No, like, they're tearing up all they are, the roads. They are literally tearing up <laughs> all their roads and leaving them and like trying to. They're trying to fix them, but instead of like how Boise, like we're doing like it's two blocks. Meal we're doing like you, two blocks of yeah. a major intersection, and we're working like half at a time. No, these guys just tear the whole thing up, and you drive on gravel and sand. I for think. Most I think of what it. they're trying to do is I think they're trying to do. What they're also Bo- trying Bo- to fix in- infrastructure. I think mm-hmm. they're trying to do what Boise didn't prepare for, which was make wider roads yeah. and make things and more accessible. Are. And they are. And ten years from now, it may be perfect because they but know we they're just growing. Literally, don't have enough construction yeah. people or people in the traffic, I guess, yeah. industry to be able to make this. Didn't happen. you grow up in Nampa? No, I did not. Grow okay, up in they're they're it's essentially starting to sound like you're trying to. So, you know, I was trying to. Off. No, I was just trying to. I'm just trying, <laughs> trying to, to defend them. A not bit trying there. to defend the city of Nampon. I I firm. I'm a firm one <laughs> A believer and uh, love living in Meridian, yeah, Idaho. One A is greater than two C. That so. is in Meridian. Uh, we're still in one A. Yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, we got to drive. Got yes. to see the train yards. Got to see the torn up roads. Uh, got to see the family dollars uh, all around. Oh, yeah. You know. So. Uh, we had a neighbor while we were signing the title and stuff come over in his bathrobe and offer us a <laughs> stereo box. So it was that kind of neighborhood. With one speaker that worked in it. Okay. And Nate kind of looked at him and did goes. Did his finger in his belly button or what did he do? No, he, he just had his bathrobe on and he's like, you guys want to buy, you guys, actually, you want this speaker box? One, oh, one speaker no. don't work though. Yeah. And Nate goes, where would we put it? <laughs> yeah. And the guy goes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and like walked back over and we were like anyway, finished oh. our stuff, drove off. Um those interactions make life. Yeah. Great. Yeah. We had to stop at the Jacksons before we left so we could uh I had to clean the front windshield. Like mm. I could not the kid was a smoker, so yeah. and There's that a film. So my level of obsession, like an O C D in a car, is a clean window. Mm-hmm. Like that like I could care less about the rest of the car because I've driven in a ton of dirty cars. I have to be able to see out the front windshield. 
a credit to you, that's one of the hardest things to do for people, that's, too. No. That's just me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I have yeah. to have a window clean. It's my least favorite thing to do is yeah. clean the front so windshield. So I went Ugh. to the Chevron or the Jacksons. We're getting, I went and got an air freshener mm -hmm. to throw in because it was making me sick. Yeah. yeah. I had the windows down, and I was like, uh, my eyes are burning in this thing. Pulled over. The I thought, oh, they'll probably have like a crappy microfiber towel I could buy for like a dollar. Like I'll buy it and I'll just clean the glass. It'll be something better. <laughs> nope, they didn't. I had to be getting napkins. Oh. And I got no. them wet with water and I just cleaned the glass as best I could with that and then drove. Honestly, a newspaper back to Boise. does a better job. I know I should have right just kind. bought a newspaper, yeah. but. Anyway, we yeah. uh, so Nate and I, but we took pictures so you can check them all out on the Rag Company Levi, uh, my Instagram page, or check them out on Facebook. Uh, we took pictures of our adventure. Nate was like, "This is like the grand tour because like he'd pull up <laughs> next to me and I'd had mine and we'd stop and I'd get gas." And he's like, "I think <clears> that back wheel's kind of uh, bent." And I'm like, "Oh, awesome! <laughs> it's really great." And he's like, "Oh, and you have a brake light out." And I'm like, "Oh, this is and sweet." When you go into a convenience store, you come out in a cow strap to your roof, you know yeah, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, basically. So it was fun. Like we had a good drive. We, he followed me all the way back to my house, so in case I broke down. Um, but truck ran fine. Yep. Made it back just in time, and then uh, Augie helped me clean it. Augie absolutely loves the truck oh, yeah. and has decided <laughs> to take all his meals out in the bed of the pickup. Uh, <laughs> he climbs in it and sits back. He's like, we should go out and drink our juice boxes out there. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds like great. Let me grab my <laughs> Let's diet. Let's have a juice box meeting Well, he outside. drinks he drinks his uh, juice box. I drink my diet Pepsi, of course. Of yeah. Course. But we went and sat out in the back of the pickup and just hung out and- uh, he asked if he could climb in it and play in it while I washed it. And I said, yeah, that's fine. You go ahead. Little did I know. So one of the speaker grills was just cracked. Mm -hmm. oh. Augie proceeded to break the rest of it all for me. <coughs> oh. So I'm like, well, okay, well, now I got to get, I was looking at replacing it. No, I really have to replace yeah. this. Mm -hmm. He gave you the reason to do <laughs> it. Was like, yeah. yeah, then there's like a little vent thing across the front windshield that ha was missing like one little broken vent piece. <sighs> So Augie made sure to break the other three off. Just, you know, help me out. Thanks, bud. Yeah, I was like, all right, that's cool. So luckily, eBay to the rescue. Yeah. Like I said, parts are cheap on that. Yeah. Um, I'm amazed at the stuff I'm finding because I can do a lot for very little. Well, people pick on GM a lot for the whole, you know, brand uh, badge engineering, essentially, yeah. where all the yeah. vehicle, it's the same vehicle with like 10 different, you know, fascias and badges and stuff. But the plus side is that means there's a sheer volume of parts you don't see in oh, many yeah. other places. Yeah, so, like I'm going to buy a new hood. I'm just going to go to the junkyard because yeah. we've bought five hoods this year for you, 40 bucks. You a piece. will find yeah. a Sonoma or an S10. Well, because it's, it's on the Blazers. It's on yeah. the Envoys. It's on the Jimmys. It's on the Same Bravadas. Stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can pick up a hood from any of those. Yeah. And it fits. Um, but all in all, it's good. It's fun. And then uh, yesterday... Uh, uh, Saturday, we also took the kids to the march oh. on the steps of the Capitol, yeah. and there was bounce houses and stuff nice. for the kids, so they love that, so we got to do that. And then uh, yesterday, my wife was like, we need to do something. Like mm -hmm. She goes, we need to go explore somewhere. And I was Ooh. like, okay. And she goes, so pick a spot. So I thought, and I thought, man, where should we go? We haven't been. Nampa. <laughs> yeah, Nampa. I already went to Nampa <laughs> once. Uh, yeah. uh, so... <clears throat> um, I said, well, let's go up to Bogus because mm -hmm. I haven't taken the kids up there before. We've oh. never driven the road with the kids before. Like, oh, wow. let's let's just go up to Bogus. You know, yeah. you guys go up there just about every other week. Yeah, it's fun. a good road. It's a fun so road. I thought, well, let's let's see what let's the hype is about. Pile up, pile yeah. in the Elantra. Mm -hmm. No, we took the Camry. Oh, okay, uh, naturally, also so a sport. It edition. is a sport yep. sport edition. It's got <laughs> 18s on it, um, and. Uh, <laughs> It's got paddle shifters, too. Yeah, okay. You guys knew that? Yeah. So I was paddle drove, shifting. So he drove up Bogus. Yeah, there was an A4 behind me that was all lowered and, and stanced out. He couldn't keep up with me. He just yeah. kept rubbing around yeah. every corner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, no, we drove up. So we were like, we'll go to we'll go to Bogus. And so Carly's like, great idea. I didn't know what we were going to do. But uh, later, my wife's friend texted and said, hey, we're going up to Bogus on a hike. Uh, this afternoon, do you guys want to go? And we were like, we want to. We, that's what we're planning on doing. Like, we're already up here. Where are we going to go? <laughs> well, we were thinking of going. She's oh, like, okay. we'll come to our house at this time and let's all just drive up. Uh, and she goes, we're going to go do the Moore's Mountain Loop. Hmm. And I thought, I've never heard of that. That's no. cool. So we drive up. Uh, basically, you hit Bogus. Mm -hmm. the, you hit the lodge. And then you go four miles past on the dirt road. Mm -hmm. Right. And then there's a turnoff on the right that goes up to a day picnic area. 
Okay. And you climb that, and then you park up at the day picnic use, and you walk, and there's a trail. It's like hmm. a two and a half mile trail, and it's totally bordered. Like it's got a, it's got markers, and it's a very nice, well groomed, clean kept trail. But it goes around the top of Moore's Mountain, yeah. which mm-hmm. is the mountain next to Bogus Basin. Yeah. So our whole view on one side was the back side of Bogus. On the other side, you could see Horseshoe Bend. Yeah. Uh, around the back, you could see all of the um, uh, Boise National Forest. And it was so clear yesterday, <clears throat> you had a view of the sawtooths. Oh, wow. From oh. where we were. Yeah. That was crazy. Like, we came around the mountain, and I was like, that's the saw. To- Holy crap! You can see the sawtooths from here, and the so, sawtooths are really gorgeous. Yeah, they're yeah. they're it's, probably one of the most yeah. beautiful mountain ranges in the world. Um, and so to see them in the back, I was like, "Holy cow! I didn't know you could see that here." And, yeah. and my buddy, who he's like, "Yeah, we do this like at least once a month. We do this loop just for fun." Uh, he was like, "I've never, I never noticed that before." He's like, "I've never seen it that clear. The sky was that good." So. You see the uh, curvature of the earth. It was really nice. And then wildflowers in bloom and stuff. Like, it was seriously <clears throat> a good trail. Yeah. Um, really well kept. Really nice. Really pretty. And the weather, it was like 62 degrees. Yeah. And a breeze. Oh, it's it's, it's perfect. So ni- when it's good up there, it's great. Yeah. yeah. So, came back down. Uh, I stayed on my buddy's rear bumper the whole time. Uh, paddle shifting mm-hmm. all the way through. And he was, uh, let's just say he was moving. I was working pretty hard well, to keep up with him. What were they driving? Him. He had a Ford Edge Sport. Oh, okay. Ooh. Well, at least it was a sport. So yeah. Comfort. Yeah. yeah. So he had the yeah. EcoBoost and all-wheel drive. and There's probably still some body room. He had though. some big wheels on it. Oh, and yeah. so he was, <clears throat> they're factory, but he was, he was putting it through its paces, and I was trying to keep up with him in my Camry Sport. So, oh, yeah. Uh, but it was fun. The kids did great. Car got filthy. Oh, yeah. I mean, just covered in dust. Yeah. And then my kids, when we parked, I got. I was like, oh, wow. Like, this yeah. car's covered in dirt. You drive that bogus lot, you're good. And, go. yeah, and my kids were like, <laughs> start touching and no. feeling it. I'm like, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, and they're just feeling every inch uh, of the car. Hadley's like, look, you put your hand on it. It pushes dust. So, needless to say, I got home, rinsed it off. The car's wearing inspiration and bead maker, so literally just came off no problem. Yeah. Protected. Cleaned up really well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was fun. But we stopped at the pack out on the way down, Hawkins pack out. That's what you do. Got some chocolate malts and some french fries and we ate. And then as I was sitting there, I looked across the street and uh, there's a local car wash called the Car Tub mm. that has been closed down. Oh, yeah. But is for sale. Ooh, oh. yeah. And those of you that know me, that's my retirement <laughs> plan is I want to say, open wait, a gonna... self-serve car wash. <laughs> So I started, I was like, oh, and I, Carly saw it. She was like, look, there's a car wash for sale. And I was like, that's pretty, she's like, look, there's no automatic bay. That's exactly, I'm like, you keep talking, wife. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was, uh, so just one of those things, like I try and think of like ways that, you know, uh, a job and Dylan and I have talked about this a lot. That's kind of our uh, plan as we get older is to purchase self-serve car washes and just do that. And you know, not quit doing what we're doing, but have something as like a side gig or an evening afternoon kind of gig where you just, you show up, you dump your quarters, you know, and then as our kids get older, you know, you give it to them kind of thing to do. I, I have an idea you can use in that situation. You know how some bars have outdoor TVs that are like weatherproof and stuff? Put some into the base. Yeah. So you can teach people proper wash oh, yeah. techniques no, while they're just, operating in the coin yeah. up. Yeah, no, I put rag company. T- <laughs> yeah, no, it'd be, the- it'd be totally, it'd be totally rag company branded. We'd be selling rag company towels <laughs> in the dis- in the vending machines. Yeah, uh, I spoke to probably now be, everybody knows. We'd probably be selling a lot of PNS, like the whole yeah. car wash. I would do it all in PNS products. Yeah, the whole thing is car wash. So I do it all PNS. I'd probably have like a bead maker wand oh, attachment, that'd be nice. so you could spray your car down with bead maker. If only all our houses could have uh, yeah, that. Yeah, you'd use pearl, like, you know, you'd have some pearl soap yeah. to use. You know, you could do some fun stuff with a car oh, wash. Totally, yeah. Um, I have, there's one car wash down the street for me that gives out a little key. So you put in, like, a $20 bill, and it pops out a little key with a code on it, like a little card, chip card oh. mm-hmm. on it, and you just stick that key in to the reader, and it gives you $20 worth of time. Yeah. Hmm. And so you just run it while you're washing the car. And usually, like, I'll do a couple things and then I'll pull it out so it's not 
yeah. eaten money, yeah. and then I'll pop it back in and finish a couple other items. I like that a lot better than the ones where you have to type in it's, your freaking credit it's, card well, number. Yeah, the- <laughs> well, you can use a card for it too, but this way you have a little key that you just set on your, you hook it on your key ring, yeah. and you can just put it in. So hmm. anyway, those are just my ideas of like yeah. how, yeah. but it was right across the street from the pack out, and there was a Subaru club yeah. oh, really? hanging out doing their own meet and greet in the parking lot of the pack out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how great wouldn't you, why wouldn't you do that? Well, you're with the right car wash, at you're an right across destination because people yeah. love driving bogus space and roads. Oh, so. yeah. Why wouldn't you do something like that and you'd set it up on the weekends, like on a Sunday night when it's dead? Yeah. And say to the Subaru Club, mm-hmm. like, hey, come on out, use our spot for parking. And, and you you're know. all of like two, three minutes from downtown. So you can yeah. really get everybody who's. You know, well, and you'd set it up with the Subaru Club to where you maybe you give them a bunch of those little five dollar keys yeah you know and go like hey here's five bucks worth of washes if you park yeah and do a thing and then they can be like oh i'm gonna yeah dudes washing their cars so needless to say you had a good weekend i had a good ideas i had some good ideas had some fun had uh, i got to play with uh, the new truck and uh washed it yep it's pretty rough (laughs) not i i didn't drive it to work today i went and got plates tomorrow i'm taking it to boise muffler to have them kind of go through the truck, they do auto repair and yeah. exhaust. So, yeah. um, so we'll see. But they're going to keep it probably for the rest of the week. Yeah, and then I'll probably have it back here next Monday and drive it to work. Then, okay. so nice. you guys can see it in all its glory. And we do uh, want yeah. to. So. Yeah, <laughs> we'll make a hype video on it. Oh man, how great would that be? <laughs> we'll get five people to watch. And then it. at the end, we'll put a uh, my other cars in a Elantra sticker. Oh yeah, yeah. in the back window. Yeah. Because so. literally, my other car is an Elantra. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty dope. No matter what you're driving, as long as you can see the enthusiasm. Think we're just, with the yeah. 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 We're gonna get some uh, ultra lights on there. Put some uh, put some Koenigs yeah. on it. We'll uh, put some of uh, the tires on there. Sporty. It's got yeah. the sport package. This yeah. Thing's probably gonna rip, dude. <laughs> it's gonna be oh, awesome. Oh, oh, this is this is crazy. Yeah. So, so, what did you do, um, Anthony? So my weekend, so my weekend started off uh, Friday night. I did the uh, I did a transmission flush on my Evo, and that was something I'd been looking forward to doing. Um, it was one of those jobs. Like I think we can all agree in this is being car enthusiasts who who listen to this and um, and who, who are just in this room right here. All it takes is just to having having a friend with a little bit more confidence than you oh, in yeah. doing something on a car yeah. that you both have never done before mm-hmm. to like motivate you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like all, all the car work I've ever done on my own was usually inspired by having a friend who's just a go-getter who's like, "Dude, let's do it. Come on over, man. <laughs> you know, we'll crack open a couple cold ones and we'll turn on some music and we'll just work on it." Yeah. And yep. and and that right there motivates me. But if if it's like Oh, I need to do this today on my own that I've never done before. If you turn it into an experience with camaraderie, it definitely helps things. Yeah. And having a friend who's like, dude, I, I've done that before, or I, you know, I've, I've, I've already read up on how to do this, it makes me feel a lot more confident in knowing, like, okay, let's do it. Let's get, let's, let's knock this out. So, uh, me and Jason, we flushed my, uh, my transmission fluid. And I know that doesn't sound like a complex job, but like on my particular transmission, you have to remove the whole under tray, you have to do a bunch of extra stuff, and then, um, then you have to basically get get the uh, exact measurement right of, of the fluid you're putting in. It's a whole process to where you have to, you know, crank open the drain bolt, rinse everything out, cr- you know, crank open the fill bolt, and then what you have to do is, you know, obviously drop the car down, get it level, get as much of the fluid back out as you can, jack it back up, start to fill it, do a tube, do all that, you know, do all that stuff, yeah. and um, and basically get it to the to get to the point where there's the right amount of fluid in there because it's not like a oh, this engine takes 2.3 liters exactly. It doesn't work like that because no. you're never on this level, perfect surface. No. So it's a matter of jacking the car up, filling it, dropping it back down, waiting X for excess to run off, you know, past the drain plug, then pumping it back up to see if there's any more links, take, you know, doing all that stuff. So um, I, uh, in the process of removing my wheel, I will admittedly say that I used the wrong lug wrench and I scuffed a little <sighs> bit of my wheel. Oh. I was uh, it was the fr- it's the first You're fired. bit of first You're, bit of you first, gotta get out of here. You're first done. bit of damage wow. that I've done, and it's not bad. But I mean, like literally, if I showed you guys a picture, you guys would laugh at me. But I remember I have issues. Yeah, so, I did get to see the picture. 
It's not that bad. <laughs> but it's bad enough. But it's that bad enough that it drives me it'll drive, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, no, it's I bad understand. enough to where it'll it'll drive me crazy. So it'll frustrate well, me. Let's I'll, just say I already have bronze touch up paint on the way. Right, there so you go. I'm already gonna plan on okay, fixing it. So that. you didn't set it on fire. That's no. a that's a good no, start. But uh so I end up doing that. Uh transmission feels buttery smooth. i I really like the the way the car is driving right now and so um I got to do that. And then on Saturday, uh, I went on a motorcycle ride, did a 200-mile day trip to wow. – um, did the – Solid. Uh, I know. It was, it was a decent ride. We went out and did the – what's called the Loman Loop. Oh, um, oh which yeah. So we go up <clears throat> through this place called Idaho City, which I spoke about in the previous podcast. So you rode past my house. And then <laughs> – yeah, rode past <laughs> – you passed your house. And then basically what you do is you ride up in the mountains. You cross through this place called Loman, which we had um, some really horrible fires in there a couple of years ago. But it's, it's kind of cleared up. A lot of the no. greenery is coming back. I have a video of that on my old but YouTube channel. It's um <laughs> it really it's a it's a beautiful ride. The roads are horrible. They're they're yeah. potholed. There I mean those roads well, take a that, beating. Like the banks Loman the quality yeah. of the asphalt the road is terrible, but the the but actual the, road, the directions it takes, the views are incredible. The views, the yeah. turns, the you it's know, a, the really one of those top 10 kind it, of roads. It really is. You drive that road. I mean, if honestly, <clears> if they <throat> fix that road, if it was freshly paved, that would be like the road of yeah, a lifetime. Highway 21 I mean, is amazing. the place to it's go. It's an amazing, amazing drive. So, um, it's also we, in the middle of nowhere. It is. So if you, yeah, if a you lot crash, of trees, but you're, you're just, you're on probably your own. gonna die. You're far away. <laughs> well, from you've got the mountain on one side, and you always have the you have the payette. Yeah. For, and yeah. So mm-hmm. you're basically you drown or you. Yeah. You're, close, You're very remote. I mean, even Life Flight would take a while yeah. to get to. Well, you. Yeah. it was just super cool because coming around, there's so there's a place called um, uh, Garden Valley Banks, or, or no, it's mm-hmm. Garden Valley is what yeah. it is. And so, uh, basically, you're coming around and you meet the Payette River. And it's super cool because you're along this cliff side to where your right side you have like the dangerous, you know, rocks falling. You have a bunch of yeah. netting. But then down over your left, you have a large dipping cliff. And the sun was coming down over the mountains, right? So it was just the perfect amount of shadowing. So it was like very picturesque, but it was super cool because looking down, uh, riding along these roads, you see the river. And then on the other side of the river, there's all these different rock formations and greenery where there were people camping, right? So it was mm-hmm. just cool seeing these, these campfires le- you know, leading the way along this whole entire river. Um, it was just very like, you know, yeah, it's scenic. Gorgeous. It is gorgeous. And, Looking like, down, and it was like the perfect amount of fire and the perfect amount of little <laughs> smoke to where I'm like, that is like something out of a picture. I was going to say, um, this seems like one of those things like, where somebody just dedicates an Instagram channel to having all this different oh, stuff, yeah, and they just idea. build it up. Yeah, it was like some like, Tom, it was like some Thomas Kincaid stuff. <laughs> I don't know how to describe <laughs> it. Like, light. like It was definitely like something where the light definitely yeah. What had time a, did you do this? So we left. We actually left uh, Boise at five. Oh, okay. Um, and it was about a three, so it was deliberate. three yeah. and a half hours. So it was, <laughs> yeah. you know, coming back into town around nine. So it was the perfect timing. Uh, but beautiful ride. Um, it was. Uh, it was the butt where the, the my bike got pretty hammered uh, yeah. with bugs. You know, summertime going along the river. You were uh, you were on the Triumph, right? Yep, and I was on okay. the Triumph. So if I was on the Grom Dane, <laughs> that would that's be... That's why I'm asking. That'd be like, I was it just... Who I all went? Be, was it just so you? It was actually, it was me, my dad, and my brother. And oh, so cool. it was a cool family ride, and uh, it was awesome because like, I, I think I told you guys previously that my brother picked up a motorcycle uh, about a month ago, and I tell people there's two different kinds of people in this world. There is a person that the right there's there, the there, there's a person there's people that are meant <laughs> to ride motorcycles and there are people that are not meant to ride motorcycles mm, right yeah. um, and there's a lot of people that are not meant to ride that do buy bikes and you know I kind of like an accident waiting to happen and you never yeah. really know until you see somebody ride you have to it's a matter of having um, not too much confidence but enough confidence to to know you know how to manage the bike how to ride yeah. the bike and how to feel comfortable because if you're too scared that's a bad thing if you're too confident that's a bad thing it's like a, it's just this weird level of respect in knowing when to go fast and when to go slow knowing <laughs> when to have your head on a swivel and when to enjoy the views like there's different there's all these different things when it comes to riding and, and for some people it's common sense they yeah. jump on a bike and they just know but then there's other people that have to either learn or train or go to stars courses or do things classes whatever it takes but i was super happy seeing that my brother was an awesome rider a guy that could jump on the bike and i look at him i'm like you are really good and you're capable but you're you know he is you know cautious but but confident he's, he's still new 
So he's still he's a new like, writer, barely like, a year. Like I mean, right? less than that. I mean, he yeah. you know he wrote he been, he's been writing Mike Grom since I got yeah. it just for fun, but. You he's know, got the him, perfect bike for starting out. Him though. on a bike, so he got an SV650 S, and it's um, uh, it's a perfect bike to where it's a it's a 650 V twin. It's got enough torque to to get him out of tight spots, but it's not enough to you know break triple digits you know in, in a <clears> yeah. couple seconds. So, uh, but he did really good. I was super proud of him. You know, my dad was really proud of him as well. My dad's got a, a Vulcan 900, and so it's a more of a, a Kawasaki. It's like a cruiser style yeah. bike, but. We had a really good ride. Uh, like I said, bikes were, were hammered. So right when I got home, uh, you know, my, my first instinct is I got to get these bugs off, right? Because I think black paint, you know, on my, on my bike, I need to get all this stuff off. But it was one of those nights where I was just, I was just exhausted after riding and after, you know, whipping through the canyons and the twisties yeah. and, and, and avoiding potholes that I was like, I think I'm going to save that until tomorrow, you know? So, so that's what you're going to do tonight. So no, I did that yesterday. Oh, okay. So I, I did knock that out. Just uh, did my my go to um, uh, distilled water um, O and R. Uh, I very rarely will I foam the bike, but if I do foam the bike, um, depending on whether or not I'm going to clean the chain uh, and do all the degreasing and things like that that we've talked about previously mm-hmm. on podcasts, um, you know, power clean at ten to one, amazing. You know, it does an amazing job at breaking down bugs, breaking down things in the tight spaces. Uh, but then following up with distilled water, following up with an ONR wash is usually uh, my, my go-to. But uh, I was pretty excited uh, because over the weekend, um, I, I think it was on Thursday, I ended up picking up a, uh, they're called pit bull stands. And they're a yeah. motor, it's a motorcycle stand. Um, I got it off the Facebook marketplace for 50 bucks, an absolute steal. They're a $150 stand is what they yeah. are. So people that um, are listening to us that are detailers, if you guys are doing bikes or planning on starting a motorcycle detailing, business or something uh, or, or bringing on bikes um, I would highly suggest investing into pitbull stands specifically that name brand pitbull um, they make Mr. the Worldwide. they make the uh, well they make the highest quality of stands I mean like honestly coming from a, a guy that's been riding motorcycles for as long as I have uh, I've bought the cheap stands from from cycle gear I've bought the cheap stands from eBay you know I've, I've gone yeah. through so many different types of brands <clears> of stands and really it's like you buy a pitbull stand that's the last stand you'll ever have to buy that Stand will outlive yeah. you. It'll 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 last forever. You can't break those things, and so if you're thinking about starting motorcycle detailing, uh, whether it's sport bikes or cruisers or anything like that, invest in that brand. I'm not sponsored by them yet, but I wish I could be. <laughs> so uh, you got the right one, baby. Uh huh. So look at <laughs> Diet Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> so if if you're ever like I said, motorcycles, look look on Craigslist, look on um, you know, or or just go out and buy them outright. They're worth the money but um i did that and uh did a lot of yard work yeah. i am i'm thinking about uh this now this is when you guys you gotta put some trees in well this is when you know you're growing up right Uh-oh. i swear to god you're I, getting like, excited no, about like, like, like this is where you know things are changing because i you know walked outside in my front yard i'm over there you know put some miracle grow my new plants that we planted you know a couple weeks ago and I look over and I see my neighbor is right in the you know, next door and his sprinklers pop up and his sprinklers are doing this cool thing to where they kind of, uh, they're spinning, they're like a rotating, but they have like a stream, a yeah. much longer stream. And I looked at that and I was like, well, that's cool looking, right? And <laughs> and I'm looking over at mine and mine are just have that just kind of misty, <clears throat> misty spray. And I'm looking at his, I'm like, well, man, he's getting, he doesn't have a dead patch at all like you know i don't think he can have dead patches those, those are really nice so i went up to him like good hey, distribution so what kind yeah. of what kind of sprinkler heads are those and you know what, what was a guy like me got to go to, you know do <laughs> yeah. to, to get those at my setup <laughs> and he was just like oh man i was had the same problem as you had a couple dead patches you know weren't getting any water switched to these bad boys and grass is greener than ever i'm like well you don't gotta tell me twice sister i'm like tell me what do i do to get these and he's like well they're about three to four bucks a piece. You know, you get them at Lowe's. Big money. Um, all you yeah, twist off the head. They have yep. a little inline filter. Twist them on, and he, and he he pulls one out of his pocket. He had one on him. He's like, of oh, course. And, of and course so he's would. like, he's like, well, check this out. He's, he's a stealth so, salesman for this yeah. particular well, brand. And so, <laughs> and, just happen to have. Is that a, is he knew that you'd a be sprinkler out head in your and pocket. I am eating it up though. Like I am all about. It. Like he has my full hundred percent attention, and I'm like, preach to me. Like, what do I got to do to get my grass? Who's the neighbor in Home Improvement? 
um, Wilson. Uh, Wilson. Wilson yeah. yeah, just picking up. I, I feel like it's well, one of those. Well, he so he pulls this out and he's like, well, he's like, what's cool is he's this little white mark right here. That's where it starts. So you adjust it to where you want the white mark to start and where you want it to end. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's amazing, right? And guys, like it's 100 percent adjustable. Yeah, this dude no. is like, totally a vendor. And, rep. You know, yeah, and he's like, yeah. And he's like, you have your tops. He's like, say if your stream's hitting too far <clears> and you want to cut it back a little bit. He's like, just adjust this at the top. I'm like, this is amazing. And I'm walking away from that conversation. Thinking to myself, what? I gotta, in the, I gotta count my sprinkler heads. What? I just got like, jazzed I'm about like, sprinkler heads. Uh, yeah, I'm sitting there like, I'm like, what in the hell? I just got, I'm like <laughs> totally pumped on doing this. Yeah. I'm literally about to go down to the store, count my sprinkler heads, probably drop 120 bucks or something <laughs> like that on on freaking sprinkler heads, oh, man. and don't care at all. Um, I just thought that was just it was the That's funniest. Funny. It was the funniest thing. I'm like, guys, I, I found guess, my sprinkler heads today or the other, this weekend. Oh, did you? I like. <clears throat> I kept seeing, like, I'd see one, and then I was like, do I have sprinkler heads on the new house? And I was mm-hmm. like, I have to. Like, this is ridiculous. But my ma- my wife and mother-in-law have been, like, just watering by hand. And I was like, this house has to have sprinkler heads. And then I was cleaning the garage out. You and I'm like, control unit there's the control or? unit mounted mm-hmm. on the wall okay. right underneath my modem. And I'm like, oh, well, there's the control unit. Mm. So I pull out the little booklet, start going through it, set on the cycles, set it up. I was like, okay, now I need to figure out how to turn them on. Go over to the sprinkler yeah. stuff, find the ports, turn them on, and I wait. Time goes by, nothing happens. Like, hmm. there's, I found two irrigation keys in the thing, yeah. and I thought, do I have sprinklers on irrigation water? Mm-hmm. It's a nice thing to have around. Here. It's possible. Yeah, there is irrigation in my neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, go over there, turn one of the keys. All of a sudden, all my sprinklers come Bow. on. And oh like my, my water, my yard starts filling up with water, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if that's the right. Uh, turn it off. <laughs> Everything mean, turns back off. I'm like, the flood okay. method is a real thing, but you no, know, it started flooding, and it also started turning the sprinklers on. I, I was feel like, like it's that oh. scene in like Christmas, uh, a Christmas vacation <laughs> where the lights come on, yeah. and it's just like, oh. yeah. I was like, oh, this is awesome, and then I turned it off, and I was like. I need to call my dad. This like, is yeah. This is intense. I'm like called him and he's like, "Well, you got this valve and this valve and blah 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 blah." And if you're doing this, and he goes, "But you're probably on city water." And I'm like, "Don't tell me that because yeah. I just spent I'm a really, bunch of money really my yard. hoping that I have." They got, it was only on for like five minutes because I wanted to see the sprinklers pop on, and I'm like, "Oh, yeah. there's one, there's one, there's one." That's all it takes. Yeah. So yeah, dude, it's a it's a joyous feeling when you're like. Oh, here it comes. Yeah, well, I'm just, I was just so jazzed about it. So uh, that's some, that's a project I will have. It's in gonna the, go on uh, your own honeydew list, like in the, the upcoming. Own <laughs> yeah, well, and I told, I, I go up to Katie. I'm like, Katie, I'm like, I'm gonna upgrade all the sprinklers, and she's just like, what? Like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, no, this is gonna be good. Like, this is gonna be an exciting thing. Yeah. And she's like, okay, whatever you want to do, if that makes you happy, I'm like, I think it will. I'm yeah. like, I'm pretty pretty stoked about. You should this. be more excited. And then when me. you're done and you get it all done, you can go to my house and we can figure yeah, out yeah. my sprinkler. <laughs> yeah. Get it dialed in. So, um, but yeah. So, anyways, Matt over. That, yeah. That yeah. That happened over my weekend. Dane, what did you do? Ugh. You know me, keeping it low working. key. Working. <laughs> I worked at the rag company. Well, all day, you know, it came uh, out and worked. I, I have like a I said, bad habit of that. This is your man cave. It is. Yeah, this like, is where I get stuff done. I like video editing. What can I say? But yeah. to that point, I was working on our travel video. Yeah, getting that arranged, getting the uh, final you know tweaks done because. I've been working on it for a while, but one of the things I had to do is, you know, some of the places we went, there's stuff we actually can't show and you we're, yet. Yeah, there's so, contracts that yeah, we're not so allowed to break. Basically, obviously at PhantomWorks, they have projects going on, so we can't show all of those. So I had to make sure I was covering up yeah. the right thing. So, you know, sent an email, ran the video by them, which I had, and they said, that looks great. Just as one thing I noticed, there's a little I, it, I had to something. watch it three times to catch it. And yeah. it's, it's totally right. It's I half don't think a second. If, if I hadn't done anything to it, I really doubt anybody would have noticed it. But I went back and I re-edited it. Nice. So now it'll be getting released. It's actually uploading right now. Sweet. So it should be going out this afternoon. Yeah, I'm so excited. you guys have to check my, that out. My it's, hope. Which, if you're watching this. It was a fun this, trip. Yeah, you're probably, this is coming out Tuesday, I think. So you guys would have already seen it, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was. I told Dane, and I wanted to tell you that, like, you guys are my favorite travel buddies to go on these adventures you're, with. You're Thank my, you're you. my like, travel bros. Listening yeah. to, like, you guys may think, like, mm-hmm. we, you know, we joke around or maybe we get tired, but, like, seriously, like, 
I have never had more fun with these two on the road doing these events and doing this stuff. So, I couldn't thank agree. You. Like, thank you. I you guys, agree. Like, you guys are we good have travel fun. Buddies. Like, and I and I joke. Like, you guys may think like, you know, because I was listening to the podcast and like we razz on each other and oh, we totally. make fun of certain things. Yeah, but it's kind of a, a like we've become like a brotherhood, so to speak, uh, for the three of us and doing these things and hanging out with everybody. And so it's it's all in good fun and all in in good love yeah. and. I didn't get to say that on the last two podcasts. I wanted to say that. So mm-hmm. thank you for thank reminding me, Dane. So yeah, thank and you. that's but the thing. What you guys way. see with us, like this is real camaraderie. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it, it's cool. It's unique, and I think you know it's a different angle for what we can present to you know like the detailing community and stuff. Because there's a a lot of different yeah. things you can yeah. be watching out there, but I feel like we bring something unique to the table yeah. with the three of us. So. Yeah. Well, and then and then hats off to you, Dane, because. Dane killed it on this travel edit. This yeah, video this is a really good video. Is so much fun. It is so cool. Like I mean, it, like he does the best job at literally giving you guys what it's like to travel with us and what yeah. it's like to be there with us and our experience from start to finish. Like, you know, there, there's no other way to portray it as you know. We we have fun. We're you know we're there to work and we're there to, we're, we're there to you know actually get some stuff done. But you know the way we handle things, like the way we we well, present ourselves to new... things, it's you know, like the reason we do these travel videos is we want you to feel like you guys get to come along, you get to experience what we experience because we're so grateful and excited to be able yeah. to do this stuff that, that that we're just trying to share it with everyone. And we don't no. want to take it for granted. So that's why no. we, we go out of our way because I don't know how these videos are going to turn out. I'm just filming stuff when we're out there and sometimes I use footage from the videos that we shoot. But also, you know, there's a whole lot of cell phone footage that ends up working out really great because it's just like fun, weird yeah. anecdotes that yeah. happen on the road. And if it weren't for, you know, having a great phone camera handy, you wouldn't know it ever happened. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it, it's kind of vlog. But at the same time, like you see other people's vlogs and it's very much like day in the life, like second by second. Mine, I try and make them a, a little more cinematic but at the same time they're not so cinematic that you lose the the human touch yeah yeah. so it it's kind of a weird hybrid that's what i try and go for with all our stuff and i i just want to you know give you a sense of what it's like to uh come along on the ride with us yeah Yeah, so that's that's why i try and and i think we should challenge other people to do that as well you know people that are whether you're a detailer or whether you're a hobbyist um if you're ever traveling if you're ever going about about doing something you know, taking a quick clip of your cell phone, because that's the thing, taking a, a, a clip of like a video of something going on and just going into your photos folder, or videos folder, um, that's not going to do you a whole lot of good, right? Yeah. Get yourself, download a basic video editing app. There's, I think there's a video editing app have, that like, I most use. Most of your phones have, I, have iMovie have iMovie, uh, Video Shop. Um, I know Android has some good ones. Take those clips. Windows com- Movie Maker. <laughs> something. Compile them together. Just take them and just yeah. throw them together. Um, maybe download a song that you really like and play that in the background. And, beware and of copyright infringement. Be, beware of copyright infringement, but just, you know, <laughs> maybe use a nice mellow track or something. Yeah. Throw it on there and then share it with people. You know, show people what you're seeing um, you know, in your experiences on your trips or your daily thing, it, it goes so much further than just a standalone shot of, of something, right? You're yeah. taking all those clips that you think you're going to do something with or think you're going to show somebody with that you don't and actually doing something with them and then producing something and making something. You don't have to be a pro editor. It's literally as easy as saying, I want this clip, this clip, this clip, and this clip, and then you select it and it brings them together for you. That's it. That's great yeah. enough. <clears throat> then throw a little video, throw a little music track over that and, yeah. and share it, upload it, or just save it for yourself. You know, save it in a folder and maybe show yeah. your kids someday. Like, that's why I told Dane, I'm so glad he does all this because one day I can show my <laughs> show my kids that, hey, your dad was doing some cool stuff. Uh, my kids freak out every time you I know? pull up pull it up on <laughs> the <laughs> TV. They're like, on the TV. you're on the TV. Like, it's they, just fun. They freak out. Yeah. They're, yeah. They love it. But it, yeah, I, I really enjoy that. And what I want to stress to people who you know might consider doing the same thing, you don't know what's gonna make the final cut, so don't be afraid to film a bunch of stuff and yeah. just you know whatever's going on. Obviously, at the same time, you have to find that balance, right, of not being so lost behind your screen recording stuff that you don't live in the moment, you don't enjoy what's actually yeah, going on. Yeah, very true. You very have true. to find that balance. But at the same time, I know I'm going to spend a lot of time behind a screen afterwards putting it all together and making something fun out of it that you can continue to watch and share with others. And they can go, oh, now I get that thing you were talking about on the podcast. Now I can really see what the actual event was like. Yeah. That's cool. 
So, yeah, I, I want to give people, like, the taste of it, but I don't want it to overstay its welcome either. This one comes in at, like, 11 minutes or something. Yeah. But it's that whole trip, you know, compressed. Well, and I'm going to have to do that when I go to the U.K. with your dad. Yeah, because you won't have Like, I won't have you there, following us. So like, so. <laughs> it's um, all on you. But yeah. you know what? Phones, a phone can do a lot these days. Yeah. So no, and can, I'll be fine with the phone. You, so you I just need to, it. I just need to make a mental note that I need to document a mm -hmm. lot of the trip. Yeah. Over there and the flight and that kind of stuff. Because, Even the stuff you don't think is important. Yeah. Just record. Record out the window on the plane. Yeah. Record, you know, some conversations you have just to pepper in some, you know, light stuff. You never know what you're going to use. So. Yeah. 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 I need to make sure that. Because it, 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 we've got like our next three, four trips. Yeah, we got four events basically. Three, off. yeah. So, yeah, because we're gonna be splitting up. All of us are gonna go to Seattle to the Museum of Flight to do Air Force One again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then Jeff and I are flying from there to the UK, and you guys are coming back and then going up to Sun Valley for the Road Rally. And we'll have Tim with us to help on that. We'll have Tim with you for that, and then. We come back from the UK, and then two weeks later, we all go to Denver for the oh, Rupes right. event. So I forgot that. <laughs> yeah, so we've yeah, got that oh, at the beginning, man. like one month away. Yeah. Um, and so in the next month, we've got literally four trips yeah. coming up that or that are we have to do. Yeah. That's what happened, and you know, I, I think that has kind of uh, an impact on the uh, the content that comes out on the channel. Yes. As it came up recently in the comments and stuff, somebody's like, oh, this is becoming the Rupa's channel. It's like, no, we try we, and get as much footage as we can. We try and get as much diversity of content as possible. But the simple fact of the matter is when we go do something, we end up with a whole lot of content on that particular subject, which obviously you want to do. If you're there, you want to make it worth your while. Get as much as you can. But then that's what you have to share for the time being. So it does. Until kind we of go seem somewhere like else and get another one. Yeah. But then we go and we do something else, and then it's a lot of that. So it comes in waves, and I just want people to understand that, that when they're watching you know, stuff on our channel, it's not always going to be just one thing. No, There's a but diversity like, of content, but it takes time. Yeah, but so. like when Dylan was here, we we got made 10 videos, basically, as yeah. we said. We said we're getting 10 videos worth yeah. of content. And then and, and when Matt the was here, we had to figure out like how many videos could we do with Matt. So we have a few you know. with matt and obsessed garage stuff but we're waiting to release those until he can release yeah. them, so we can kind of do it in yep. tandem and then so. uh same with uh you know when jason kilmer was here same mm -hmm. thing we're like let's try and figure out how many videos we can get with him and do his thing and then we're yeah. going to seattle and we're already trying to figure out like what can we get done in the two days that we're there what kind of content <laughs> can we last year we kind of did just like one overarching video for the uh, the Air Force One detailing yeah. thing. This time maybe we can do some more like compartmentalized stuff or yeah. we can try some different things with it. Or we can do a new travel, travel video. While. while you guys are doing that, I'm going to be in the actual museum um, going <laughs> on the rides. So, Remember the, that they had yeah. that, that yeah. simulator, that plane yeah. simulator? I was kind of bummed. I was like, I wish I would have done that. <laughs> But it goes upside down. Yeah. And it does a bunch of cool things where I'm like, uh, you no, know. No, I've been going there since I was a little, little kid living in Seattle. It's, that museum's always been It's awesome. an amazing museum. Yeah. I was I was super impressed at the, uh, like, the World War II area mm -hmm. of the oh, museum. Oh, I love that. That, I was, was, that was, I loved it. It was amazing. all those planes, man. They had <laughs> cool, like, games where you can go and play video games and fly a plane, like little simulators yep. that you could do uh, that were free. You just walk up and start playing. But I liked... I mean, I think museums that have a high production, you know, have that high production quality to where they really do the lighting and do everything and create that ambiance of, of being somewhere. And even when the smells, right? You get walk. into an area and you smell like... Yeah, they that start smells doing gunpowder. Like, and... yeah, it smells like gunpowder. It smells like mm, yeah. uh, canvas, like, you yeah. know, that canvas material. Like, that smells like a duffel bag. Yeah. And that's kind of cool. Smells of rich mahogany. Rich, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, you walk out into that glass atrium with all the oh, planes yeah. hanging from yeah. the ceiling. That was always the part that blew my mind yeah. as a kid. And what's it's amazing? Wandering around an underneath. SR-71 yeah, Blackbird out staring you in the face. It's the yeah. coolest thing. You walk underneath you're a little it. kid. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. There's so much rare, unique, interesting you know, aircraft and just artifacts from all kinds of stuff through all the world wars and all, all this different stuff. It's just fascinating. Yeah. I really like the little, uh, one of my favorite planes there was the, um, passenger plane that was a propeller plane. Um, the Ford trimotor. No, it was the, it was the Alaska airlines one oh. or <clears throat> that was there. That was an old, like, flight back and forth between like Boise and Seattle or Seattle yeah, and it was Portland like a commuter plane it was a kinda. commuter plane but it was from like the 40s mm -hmm. and to see the interior of that yeah. and the, the 
seats and like the when you're walls looking at these the fairly old fashioned building materials, a lot of wood, a lot yeah. of different stuff like that, and you're just going, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, people used to f- ride on this thing. People used to trust this. And I mean, you, I have a hard time yeah. trusting what was <laughs> built 10 years ago. Yeah. And there's people on there flying pieces of wood. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, <laughs> you have to imagine it was loud. Oh, yeah. That. I couldn't yeah. even imagine. Like, I, I already am like super sensitive to the noise on an airplane already, where I'm like, <laughs> yeah. this is. If I hear a panel rattling, like yeah. that's all I can hear. E- even yeah. today's economy stuff is luxury compared to what some of those yeah. things were. Yeah, but to see that and go like, oh, this yeah. is this was nice. Yeah, like still, though, and I, stuff, I, like, I think it kind of peaked in the '60s and '70s in terms yeah. of like comfort in air well, travel. Yeah, they changed that. They changed that, but this was like literally like pre, yeah. like right after the end of the war. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. this is how people flew. <clears throat> like. I, no, I, I think the one you're talking about was from the late 20s. It might have been a 20s, 30s, 30s plane. Because it wasn't an aluminum plane. It's like wooden. It it's looks like wood, a, yeah. It it's, looks like a San Francisco trolley with wings. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it does. It's pretty wild. I liked seeing the uh, the Boeing, the big uh, um, cargo jet that that, yeah. that was in yeah. there as well. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I know people who are maybe in the military are like, a cargo jet? What's, what's so exciting about that? I think just the sheer size mm-hmm. of just walking and being like, you can throw a football in here. Like, yeah. literally, you could... You could it, <clears throat> pretty far where you can play a good game of catch yeah. inside this plane but then seeing how much storage and how much extra you know from top to bottom how big this thing is mm-hmm. you know it's it's crazy and it's awesome because it's not just a, a cutaway like a like a subsection of something you're actually in a real plane and this is the yeah. real scale and well, size and one of, the, of everything or the concord i was talking about that yesterday oh, yeah. uh, to my buddy and i when we were hiking he was i was telling him we were going up there again and I was like, he's like, I always wanted to check that place out. I heard they have a Concorde. I was like, they mm-hmm. do, and you can actually get inside of it and walk through yeah. it. Yeah, which is wild. You can't and do that most places. Yeah, so. it's a it, that's a cool plane too. Is because that the, actually grows when it's flying? It yeah. lengthens <laughs> the heat expansion. Yeah, yeah. just that's, crazy. It's very tight in there, by the way. Oh, <laughs> oh it is. it's tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's small. But yeah, think about it. You're like, I'm going to get across the ocean in how many Three hours, hours or something? Three hours. Than, yeah, something. In, in terms of cross section, it's about the, the size and side of like being in a, a Volkswagen Beetle or a Fiat 500. You're just like, yeah. Okay. It's literally only four. <laughs> it's a two by two. Mm-hmm. Like there's, it's yeah. yeah. It's 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 but it's small. seated like, but it's pretty long. It was like forty row, thirty rows or something. It was but long, but to do what it did when it did, it had to you know fit that certain footprint. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's so cool. cool. So um, anyway, we, there's we also people. <laughs> all, there's also people going to be working. At yeah, this, we're going to be yes. wandering. <laughs> By the way, the detail mafia will actually be working there. Yeah, yeah. So the guy, we'll all the that detailers too. that are there, they're yeah. they're going to be working on the plane. So it's just going to be cool to be a part of that. Yeah, Check them out, see and, them again, and, and they catch are up with all our old friends. Hands down, some of the hardest working people I have oh, I, yeah. I have seen. Those guys are they're literally they they're bust their butts. They're busting their butts. They volunteer for seven days sometimes two weeks depending yeah. on the job and what all the projects they have to do and it's not just air, air force one they're working on what last time it was like 17 or 18 yeah aircraft. they were doing polishes and that, some of them were one step some were just wash and waxes yeah, some I mean, were, let's be you realistic know. you're not going to be doing like a 100 percent correction on, no but they know. were they did uh, one step on yeah some of them they did full metal polishing on another yeah. on one of the bombers well, like one of them was um, like full aluminum well in this year it's the first actual like year that the that they're completely covered yeah so last year was the first year of the top so they were cleaning up the planes because they'd all been exposed Mm -hmm. outside to the the sun and the construction and all that and then this year is the first year where they actually we're going to go back and this will probably be the easiest year do they have walls they don't have walls yet okay but it is a fully covered carport so think about if you had a car and your car was out in the sun and not not washed regularly, yeah. but just out in the sun, and you did a correction on it to clean it up, and then the next year you put it under a carport. Yeah. yeah. And it stayed under that carport. The damage is much less significant. Because yeah. it gets so, windy out yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're by the... So this year's the first year sound. to see these planes after they've been covered. And so to the guys, the, the detailers that came prior to that, that would actually spend a week... Oh. In the sun on the tarmac, they were working outside. So hard. Those guys busted their ass. Yeah. Not to say that you they know, won't. Not this to say year. that this team isn't, but I can't even <clears throat> imagine the level of work that's brutal in the weather and the like. Because we were there and we were like, "Wow, this is really nice." Like shaded cover. There's a nice cross breeze. <laughs> they're all telling us they're like, "Yeah, we should have like been here a couple of years ago." <laughs> like, so this is a good. This will be a neat year, really, to see how yeah. well the car the planes have held up. Yeah. So and that just means. 
with that in mind, they'll probably be able to do even more. And all the planes had bead maker put on them, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if it rains, yeah, that'd be good to see. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, we had that going on. And then Dane, what else did you do over the weekend? Uh, I dropped in on the new and improved cars and coffee. Nice. Ooh, How'd that yeah. go? So uh, well, I, I got there a little now, late. For those that are wondering, <laughs> you probably saw the national <clears throat> news last year. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it on our podcast. Uh, yeah. Too. Our cars and coffee <clears throat> just started. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you that have been having cars and coffees since the spring. Lucky for you guys, but Mm -hmm. Boise basically was having a hard time trying to figure out whether they could bring it back, whether they could do it after the accident. A lot of local businesses got got scared away because they didn't want to house the insurance for something like that again after that accident. For the people that that don't know, a Porsche lost control and leaving the cars and coffee. Leaving cars and coffee. It it jumped a curb, um, it hit a sign, and it hit a couple people, yep. and and so no, nobody died. But yep, there were people that people that were seriously injured. But so, apparently, the genius behind the wheel, a took lot of off kids, the traction control, out. and decided I'm going to go for some wheel spin on this exit. So yeah, yeah. yeah. and it was an older gentleman. <clears throat> it wasn't a kid. It no. wasn't a teenager. It wasn't anything like that. Uh, the the teenagers and the younger folks were actually very well behaved. This was a 60 year old man in his Porsche. That the it probably was something to prove. Yeah, something yeah. that he just thought, hey, I'm going to do, and isn't I, on Facebook, I isn't on the Instagram. His isn't wife on the was groups. in an M3 tearing yeah. off ahead yep. of him, and he's just like, oh, I got to show off and then catch up with yeah. him. So anyway, I don't I, Just search <laughs> Boise Cars and Coffee Porsche yeah. on it's YouTube, just better, and you can just, see the you'll video. You'll see like a yeah. million posts. Don't yeah. it, so. just never take a rear wheel drive car out of a car show thinking something good's going to happen. Well, and it's mid-engine, yeah. so it's yeah. not going to have quite the same friendliness as a front-engine room. Yeah, a absolutely car not. So, anyway, so, so how um, was it? So, a new location so, this year, new yeah, management, new, location. new crews. They have it at the uh, Boise Village, which is, uh, well, not Boise, the Boise Village, it's in Meridian. Meridian Village. So, yeah, I should know. I live over yeah. there. So, anyway, yeah, it's a new location, and uh, I think as far as the way the management works, the, the previous folks just said, okay, after some stuff, we just want to, you know, put it to rest we won't do this so some new people said well we'll make one ourselves instead <laughs> yeah. so they kind of just started their own thing yeah, and they organized and they got some stuff rolling and uh yeah i found out about it because i was driving and a guy in traffic in an audi a3 next to me was like complimenting my volvo as i'm driving home and he's just like hey we're doing this cars and coffee thing this weekend you should come and i'm like huh and i thought that was he goes, no we're doing a new thing and it was you know, he, he was kind of playing it up, and he's like, I'm one of the organizers. Like, yeah. Okay, well, all right. And he just, you know, <clears throat> the dude totally from flattered me about my Volvo. Exotics? So I was like, sure, I'll show up. From but, Intermountain uh, Exotics? I don't know if he, he was R8? that guy or not. No, no, no. This guy was in an A3. Oh, okay. But it was heavily modded. So okay. any rate, he, he was in the, uh, you know, little wagon hatch type mm-hmm. deal. But, yeah. of course, he was complimenting my Volvo. Yeah. But any anyway, rate, yeah. So that was fun. But I decided, okay, I'll show up. But I was a little late because I had some other stuff to do that morning. So by the time I got there, it was like mm, 1130, 1145. Mm-hmm. And they had started at 9, and they said it would run until 1. But, of course, this being their first true cars and coffee of their new arrangement, you don't know how it's going to turn out. Yeah. You don't know what people are going to show up. You don't really yeah. know what kind of turnout or what kind of vendors might show up or anything. And it's in a new and, location, and it, so and a lot of people And it wasn't on the third Saturday of the month anymore. It was on the first Saturday. It sounds like these the guys are going to be Saturday doing it more frequently because yeah. in the past it was always once a month here in Yeah, Boise. third Saturday. But now month. it sounds like they want to do it like every two weeks or wow. something. But, okay. you know, other towns, bigger towns, they yeah. do it every week, yeah. weekend. Yeah. But uh, yeah, any rate here, they did it in uh, basically a big empty parking lot that's behind some of the stores that are kind of adjacent to the village. So it's not quite in the village like some people might have pictured, but it's just a parking lot back there. And, you know, by the time I got there, it had cleared out a little bit. It wasn't quite as busy as, you know, whatever. But I saw pictures from earlier and it did look like it was a good chunk of people there. And I believe Anthony was there earlier. So he probably I, I saw it as it actually was. I stopped by for just, I mean, I'm talking maybe 30 minutes when they were first opening up because, uh, uh, oh, amongst the other things, I went to the Lavender Festival on Saturday. Oh. I got dragged. The fiance took you me really to You really are uh, growing up. <laughs> smelled some lavender. Yeah. It was nice. Like, I'm not going to lie. It was very <laughs> relaxing walking in some <laughs> lavender fields. But that's besides the point. So I stopped at Cars and Coffee and uh, pulled in, saw a couple of the people getting set up. You know, it's not, it seemed like a, a much more organized event than, than the previous ones. Uh, no offense to the other guys that were hosting the previous one, but they, uh, I like the idea that they did a $5 charge at the, at the beginning. So you actually had to pay five bucks oh. to bring your car in, but oh, all okay. that money went to charity, which oh, was nice. cool. Yeah. So yeah. I, I 
was down for that. I like. Well, the and hopefully, that. You, if you get people to pay, you get the chance to like give them rules and stuff, like yeah. basically yeah. saying like, "Hey, I was no, gonna say that no, little take that it little off. cover charge at the door, so to speak." It weeds out some folks. Oh, it I does. can imagine. Uh, yeah, just it's, saying. It absolutely. And so you can still. I mean, it, the the event is free to walk over. If you parked yeah. somewhere else and walked over, but if you want your car to be parked in that parking yeah, lot, why you have to not? pay five bucks. Yeah. So um, it did. Yeah, and it weeded out a lot of the. Um, I don't know how to put this. Uh, the the cars <laughs> that you know may not be anything. The ones show who would only turn up if it was free. So well, what you're you know, saying is I should go down there, pay five bucks, <clears throat> bring the Elantra. Well, it, it, it's it's right. it, it's for example, like it, it's like if you go to a car show, right, and you yeah. see a whole line of cars and all these nice, beautiful cars parked a certain way, and then you see a two thousand GMC Sonoma. A, a, yeah, two thousand GMC bunch so, of park, park, failure. parked the other way, right? <laughs> Spray and, painted, couple bald and, tires, and you're like, well, that is out of place and that doesn't look right and that person's parked the wrong way, right? It's yeah, not very picturesque. Right. Now if it was so, rat rotted, maybe. Yeah. But yeah. Um, as but, it sits. Mm. So so rolling in in the morning, it, you know, something kind of dawned on me and, and I'm looking around and seeing everybody wiping down their car with quick detailer, things yeah. like that, right? And, oh, yeah. and, and part of me it is happy to see that people care about their vehicle and they want to yeah, show it off. Yeah, they want to make it shiny. Um, but there was a guy with a, um, um, a Viper out there. He's a red Viper, white stripes. And I'm, I'm seeing him. He's got a Costco towel in his hand. And I see him cleaning his wheel, right? And this towel is pretty bad, right? Because um, it's bright yellow. It was bright yellow, but, it, it, but I don't think he was using product. I think he was just taking a rag oh, and, just, just and just, wipe, and just yeah, wiping dry it dry. Wiping it. So he's wiping his chrome wheel, right? And he's sitting there getting all the cracks and crevices and things like that. And then I see him take the towel from the wheel up to the rear quarter panel and continue to wipe and continue to rub it in. And, and you got to do it in that order, and otherwise it yeah, doesn't work. Well, and he's dry well, you wiping. you got to make yeah. sure you get a lot of brake, the iron brake dust. You want to get as much as you can. This is the, the part towel. where we become very petty and judgmental. <laughs> and then you want to <laughs> wipe it on your corner. So I don't I mean, so like I see that, and you know, I'm like, that's a nice vehicle there. And, yeah. And it, it kind of dawned on me that, you know, somebody, you know, it, us we're educated. We know right. we know that's not something to do. We know the people listening are educated. That's not something that you do. But is it our business to go up to them to say, "Hey, I, I, you know, should I pass on the education? Does it do I sound <clears throat> snobby? Do yeah. I sound rude? Not everyone or, or appreciates do, that. Or would somebody appreciate that? Yeah. Like if I came up to that guy and said, "Hey, I, you know, and he's an older gentleman, gentleman, and I'm not saying that the older guys are are." harder to work with but sometimes they're stubborn in their ways and you know let's well, be honest it, a lot of the biggest thing you got to go stubborn. back is to remember for those of you that are listening not everybody knows what a swirl mark is yeah not everybody knows what no. the scratches are from the car wash um they might think you're there's a guy so i stop by saturday mornings i always stop at this jackson's to get some soda um and i get myself a drink and my wife a drink and then we get our fountain drinks to start the morning because we don't drink coffee and I always stop, I go in, grab the sodas, and there's a guy that pulls up in his red Tesla, mm -hmm. runs it through the Jackson's car wash, right? Pulls it back <laughs> yep. out the other end, then pulls out one of our twist and shouts uh -oh. to dry off his red Tesla. I think I know the guy you're talking about yeah. then. Well, and it, and it, I always it, get a kick out of that, because I'm like... Like, I, I'm flattered, but it also hurts me inside yeah, to I'm know like, that. Yeah, thank you for using a very high-end microfiber to dry your car off, but you did just run it through one of the scratchiest car washes in the town, yeah. in the city. So, and then he takes it up to Cars and Coffee. But you know, like, what? if he's happy with it, then that's the level right, he's comfortable right. with. And so you got to remember there are those people who just, so you're right. How do you approach those people to teach them without, without coming, coming off, off like, a, like you know at all? Well, yeah. and the other thing is... It's one thing to go up and approach somebody and just try and offer some friendly advice, but you have to also put yourself in their shoes and see, this person's coming up to me. What are they about to try and sell me, <laughs> right? Because you, yeah. you feel like, because some detailers and some see more success than others where they'll go up and they're like, car shows are my jam. That's where I go and I talk to people yeah. and I teach them and I can get clients that way. Well, and you have to to be careful in how you approach so this stuff. here's my idea you go to the show next time and you bring your polisher and a generator and you start polishing polisher your car. and generator levi yeah. i have something called the rupes hybrid nano yeah you attract more with honey saying, than vinegar you gotta have the noise <laughs> well you do I, have to have the noise because then people go what is that guy doing generator yeah. yeah well if you've ever seen there's a photograph <clears throat> i have way back on my instagram way back you guys have to go back I was in a Fred Myers, 
and there was a picture of a generator. Uh, like a, it was a box you could buy this generator yeah and one of the things the guy did was he put the way it was positioned was hilarious he had uh like a rotary polisher okay like a big handheld yeah kinda. no like an actual oh, okay, rotary, like rotary polisher rotary. okay and he had it plugged into mm. the generator no extension cord just straight plugged into the generator oh, so boy. it barely reached the hood then on the he had the polisher on the hood wearing an apron in a park that's right. Oh, and, oh I remember yeah. this now. He had oh, I every love this. Single, every <laughs> single type of, like, basically everything that we have back there uh-huh. positioned on the hood of his car Yeah. two feet from where he was polishing. Yeah. Didn't, so I'm just saying, you could do the same thing. Didn't Fire you? Fire up that generator. Well, he did that once, to get girls. I was just yeah. saying, <laughs> didn't you once have a client or somebody who was like, yeah, I like to go out to the park to polish my car because that's where all the chicks are. That and wasn't that dude. Who was said like, that? Who we said heard that? that. I remember I think it was hearing Dylan. that. I think Dylan, Dylan told us that. Yeah. yeah. Some guy would go out to the park, polish his car in the parking lot of the park, and he'd just watch like joggers he'll, like, go watch by like people a total run creep. By. No, but my dad said. <laughs> it does work, guys. I mean, like it really does. Chicks did that. No, my dad said that that's what, like, so Julie Davis Park. Yeah. Here in Boise, there's uh, that, you can drive that loop around and out. My dad said that used to be two lanes. Mm. Yeah. So you could drive one way, you could drive the other, and people would park on the side, and he goes, people would park and they would cruise mm-hmm. the park <laughs> on a Saturday. He's like, yeah. it used to be bumper to bumper. People just wow. cruising during the daytime before they go cruise at night downtown. Yeah. So they turned it into a one way and put in all those speed bumps. I hate mm-hmm. those speed bumps. Yeah, the because worst. that was to, he goes, they did that in the late 80s, or I mean, early 80s, the late 70s, to curb the amount of cruising that was going on. Of people just racing and dragging and car wrecks. And it, you think about that little and road. I know, I know some people are all on board for like, but, well, let's limit the number of things. But come on, can we let some people just have their fun? But, <laughs> but he said, what you would do is you would go park your car. And you would wax it. Oh, yeah. And you'd watch people cruise back and forth, and people would walk. And he goes, it was like a weird impromptu car show. He goes, <laughs> yeah. be, he goes, me and my buddy Crow would be out there waxing our cars. Yeah. At the and I was like, Julie Davis Park, you would go wax your cars in the park. <laughs> like, what kind of weird? It's like stuff. park underneath the tree, tree yeah, sap. Under you know, the use tree that sap. as yeah. extra. So you know. Again, man. this is the city of trees. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do have a lot of trees around, and so yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah. You're, the That's... car's getting sap on it. So, I mean, I guess I guess what, we, we, what you can get out of this, guys, is that you know, you, you'll know find a lot of possible customers at, at car shows, um, but I'd be creative in how you go about maybe presenting that, You know, whether it's doing a test spot, whether it's approaching them nicely. I think if you go up to them being a jerk saying, hey, your car looks like crap, let me fix it. I don't think that's going to get you, you, don't, you don't a whole lot, lot of, yeah, whole lot of business. Um, you know, in... And I think it's educating people too. Yeah. Um, would would be a big thing. Maybe if you brought your own car that was yeah. corrected, and you parked somewhere close, and you say, "Hey, let me show you the difference between you know a swirl free finish and a swirled finish." Right? Uh, there was a black RX seven that was out there, an FD RX seven, which I absolutely love. Of course, um, the FDs, yeah. and uh, it was the uh, it was black, and it was so bad. It oh. was it was one of those where the swirls had swirls. Yeah, it's- and. I was thinking to myself, this car could look so good if this was fixed. But it was, you know, it was one of those. Uh, I think it was a for sale. Uh, it was for sale, and they were saying, "Oh, we just want to get this thing sold." You know, we're not super worried about it looking good. And um, that makes a difference. And, and I was, and I wanted to say, well, I understand that, but you know, that 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 you get that, more money that, out of that car. That, that three hundred dollar single step, you know, four hundred dollar, you know, double step, whatever, how, you know, however many steps you want to do, yield. whatever your pricing is, could yield. Extra thousand dollars, maybe or five thousand, two thousand, five thousand, making yeah. it nice. Something. FD, I mean, I mean, it's <laughs> there's so many things you can do and educate people on. Um, I just and especially at car shows, I feel that um, if you see somebody, for example, there was a, a red Supra there, right? Um, mm-hmm. It had just been coated by our friend Brian over at Gearhead Detailing, right? Yep. So shout out to Brian. He um, did a great job. The car looked yep. great. The kid rolled into the show. Keep in mind, I think he was 18 years old. With a, a Mark IV with, a, with a Mark IV Supra oh. with we got a lot of with, with, with in Volk town wheels. Here. I mean, he's one very lucky uh, kid. So he pulls up in this car. Maybe he worked and for it. And I look. Um, I 
I'm hoping so. He also had a pair of Yeezys on, and so <laughs> okay. I, I am. Uh, let's just we'll leave it that there. But he Blessed. had he did have an Eagle Edgeless inside the passenger. Yeah. And so okay. The, and I saw that, and I was like, oh, cool. Brian well, must have Brian, left him that. Brian must have given him that. And I went up to him and I talked to him. Really cool kid. And I said. He said, hey, did Brian tell you to go pick up some decent car supplies? And he's like, yeah, he told me to go to this place called the Rag Company and ask for- and you had your Rag Company shirt on. And ask for a Levi. <laughs> I actually had my backwards hat oh. on. And I said, I flipped it around. You're I'm like, oh, that's, that's, actually, old place. that's actually me. And he was like, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah you're I'm, like, I'm, I'm Levi. I'm going to have you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Levi I'm Gates Levi from the Rag Company. I, uh, so, I covered my tattoos yeah. today. But. So, he, um, so he was like, yeah, I need to come pick up some product. But I saw him you know, later, you know, you know, 10 minutes later, he was wiping down the front of his car with the Eagle, right, which was cool, but he wasn't using any type of uh, lubricant. lubricant. He wasn't any, using any, no dry. detail spray. He was just bone dry wiping it. I don't understand. I'm and, just dusting. <laughs> and I, you know, and it's like, do I go up to him and say, hey, man, you can't do that because you're taking a dry surface to a dry surface with dust in between and you're swirling your finish or... You know, how do Don't I... tell him he can't do that. Explain to him and educate him why that's not the best idea. And then yeah. you could like well, leverage and, uh, maybe that. Maybe we've also put it out to you guys if you have any ideas or yeah. things, thoughts that had work for you. Uh, you know, leave them in the comments below. Yeah. Go yeah. on the YouTube channel and, in, and in... let us know or email us. And I and I think in that in I guess the why I'm I'm questioning this is it's not because I'm going to go there trying to try to get a business from a detail job. I'm just thinking from an educator's perspective and what we yeah. do so well yeah. in our videos. You know how, how to do can, it. How to do it in the field. How can I do it in the field? I've done it. I've told you guys the story of me being in, in a Walmart. You know, helping people out yeah. with products. <laughs> impromptu you know, clinic. In, impromptu car clinic and the the detailing aisle of Walmart. And I've done that. And I've done that well because that was I was in my uh, my domain of detailing yeah. products. I was able to 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 wing it there. But going to a place where. Uh, it's cars, right? It's another domain, but it's a domain where, you know, detail products aren't often evolved. No. So uh, something to think about, I guess. Yeah. So let well, us know. Well, I mean, like when we were working with Rob Ferretti, he made it very clear. He's like, if the car is dirty, I'm still going to drive it. Yeah. Like that That was the yeah. thing. And there are a lot of enthusiasts out there who approach it that way. They're like, I yeah. don't care what it looks well, like as long as it's fun to like drive. Me. And that's okay. Yeah. Like I was driving that little truck back and yeah, it stunk. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like crap. But I had fun driving that truck back. You were just excited. Yeah. Like, but I look at that and I go, this is what I like. I look yeah. the, like the dirty things. But th this is it's still a vehicle. It's something yeah. I'm excited about. It's something I'm excited to play with. No. So, Yeah, because not all detailers are into patina. But Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This doesn't have patina. This has spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being charitable. Your truck is <laughs> god awful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway. You can say, cool. all right, Dane, you haven't <laughs> even seen the truck yet. I'm just judging You're based on what you've based told up. me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> When I take a look at it, I was yeah. like, yeah, it's about as wow, good as it's my not Miata. As, not as bad as I thought it was. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, uh, all right, Dan. with a roller. Okay, yeah, there any you go. <laughs> <laughs> any rate. All right. So you guys done? I'm done. You're good? That's all I got. All right. Well, oh, you guys wow. have fun. Kind of had a long yeah, episode. Yeah, this was today. a long episode. But, Enjoy it, you know, guys. Enjoy it. You, you never know how it's going to turn Get those out, last so. 10 minutes for free. <laughs> <laughs> any rate, guys, thanks so much for listening or watching if you're on YouTube. If yep. you're listening, you might be on iTunes or ShoutEngine.com at the Rag Company Podcast. Any Who rate, knows? I guess that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. I am freaking out because I took one of your uh, your fat burners. Yeah, and now it's, I'm it's, like, yeah, it's finally hit you along yeah. with the Red Bull. It's, yeah. uh, Dane, it's kicking uh, in. Well, <laughs> it sounds like we got to take Dane to the hospital, guys, <laughs> so we will catch you in the next yeah. one. So any rate, guys, thanks so much. See ya. Take See ya. Care.